I hated it. I had to fight through some mental demons like a son of a bitch. But we made it. We made it to the end. 26.2 miles in the desert, baby. Let's go. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Uh. All right, we're here. It's just me solo. Thank you guys for tuning in to the We Built an Empire podcast. I am your host, Kyle Wolf. I uh, was looking at some things today, and uh, I feel honestly, truly blessed that those of you that listen to, watch this show, share it, uh, have stuck with me this long. Uh, I think we're at uh, episode 26. And, uh, yeah, just looking at some of the numbers today. I'm just so blessed. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart uh, for tuning in every week, liking, sharing, uh, commenting, uh, just doing anything you can to to tell people about this show. It means the world to me, and I thank you guys so much. But uh, I just wanted to get on here. Everybody's kind of coming back in from spring break and talk about sort of a wild week. You know, uh, I think everybody had heard me talk about um, on a few episodes past about I had scheduled to run a marathon, the Boston, the Boston. <laughs> yeah, I did not run the Boston Marathon, but I did run the uh, Baton Memorial Death March Marathon. And, um, you know, I just wanted to kind of come on here real quick and just show you guys some things like, look, look, look at this. Like this, this is a full marathon, 26.2 miles. It's in Las Cruces, New Mexico which is in southern New Mexico, right near the border. Um, I don't know how many miles it is away we could see, but, I mean, here, here's a really good picture. Like, l- let's just look at this right here. I mean, this is, this is, this is an aerial view of the area. It, it's very much desert, and this race is nothing to joke about. Like, you read all the reviews, and it's a qualifying race for the Boston Marathon, but you read all the reviews, and everybody's like, the sand is no joke. You know, the incline is no joke. Uh, some years, the wind is no joke. You know, and it, it can be brutal. And thankfully, we had cool weather. We didn't have crazy wind. You know, it wasn't any of that. But uh, still, nonetheless, it was a mental battle, um, every bit of it, you know. And I just, it's crazy. There's there's flat parts of it. There's gravel parts of it. There is concrete paved incline for five and a half miles parts of it. There's the last six miles that's in a sand trap where you're running through one to two inches of sand. And it's just, it's fucking hard. You know, I've never run another marathon. I've run, this is my second time to have run this race. The first time I didn't train enough. This time I trained my ass off and hurt myself at about mile 20 and just had some issues with my, with my knees and had to just kind of like run, hobble, limp the last six miles or so. And it was just brutal. And that's the worst part of the race to have that happen to you because it's the sand trap. <laughs> and I knew it. I knew it was coming. And so I stepped off at mile 20. And at that point in the race, I'm I'm set like to beat my previous time running this in 2019 by nearly an hour, possibly like an hour and five, hour and 10 minutes, if I could keep up that pace. And I'm feeling so good. I'm exhausted. I'm I'm completely, you know, just gassed, but I've got enough in the tank to just keep going, keep moving. Uh, And I, so I step off at, I felt something happen at mile 18. And it just, it was like a, a a twinge in my knee or something was weird. And it was on the back of my knee, which was kind of crazy. So, you know, my head goes, all right, it's just, you know, we're, we're obviously, we're sore, we're running, we're, we're into this thing. Uh, so I kept going, kept pushing through it. But at mile 18, you're coming down, you're coming down a pretty steep incline on packed pavement. You know, you go up at five and a half miles, you come back down it because you connect into the track and uh, you're you're on it for about two and a half or three miles, and then you kind of bottom out. You get to the mile marker twenty, and then you turn off and you go into the sand trap or the big the big uh, gulch. And uh, so I got off at twenty, 
you know, and it's, it's not a, a two track or anything, right? You're on a road at this point, but I got off and stretched. I'm like, okay, I know the part coming up is going to be so horrible. It's going to suck. You know, this is the sand trap. This is the, you've been dreading this for six months training, this single point. So I hopped off the, the, uh, the raceway and I'm just, I just wanted to kind of stretch. I wanted to make sure that like my hip flexors were good. My ankles were good. My knees were good. My quads were good, you know, and, and I'm, fully hydrated this time. And I step off and I stretch and everything feels kind of good. And then I step back onto to the road and start running and I can't put any pressure on my knee. I mean, I felt like I wanted to almost collapse, you know, and, and I'm looking down and both of my knees at this point are, are so swollen. I mean, you can almost, the, the, the standard like dimension of my knees where you could see my kneecap and you could see the edges of my, of my knees. It's gone. It's just, it's inflamed. Um, it's hurting. It's swollen. I don't know if it was water retention or what, but I went to put pressure on my knee and nearly collapsed and it was brutal. Um, and I just started thinking, I'm like, no, 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 We're, we are kicking ass. Like we are doing so good. Like now is not the time. Like you, you can literally see the water tower. You can see the towers. They're in your sight. All you got to do is run another six miles. And so I, I attempt to run and I, I maybe I get five, 600 yards, 800 yards, thousand. And it, it's just, it's so painful. I cannot physically block it out of my head. I can't, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm blaring music. I'm literally screaming and my earbuds are in and I'm just, ah, like just trying to get enough adrenaline to kick this pain out of my brain. And I just, I simply cannot. And I have to stop for a second. And before the race, I, uh, you know, there's a ton of sand. So almost everybody wears gaiters just to prevent more sand from going into the shoes. You know, as little of sand in the shoes as possible. You're going to get sand in there. You got to stop every once in a while dumping, you know, or you'll get huge blisters. But I had gone the night before to Walmart to get some uh, women's pantyhose because um, they, they actually uh, are really good at, at uh, sand gaiters. So they didn't have any that are the real, real thin kind. And so they had like the full leggings. So I bought those. And for starters, those are horrible, horrible as actual gaiters. They don't work worth a fuck because they're too big. They're meant to go over like a full calf and a full thigh and a knee and, you know, um, but we were wearing them. And I, at that point, I'm like, okay, what do I have to kind of semi splint my knee or give extra, like, oh, just to try and make like a makeshift brace to where I can possibly run through it. And I, uh, I end up taking these women's, um, like leggings and I, I put, put them both on my right knee and I tie it and twist it into a knot as best I can above and below the knee. And then I, I was wearing, because it was kind of cold that morning, so I was still wearing my Under Armour base layer. And I rolled it up to place more pressure right on top of the actual kneecap. And that gave a little bit of relief. And so I started to kind of run again. I was like, oh, I can do this. Okay. Like the knee is going to support. Well, at that point, <laughs> I'm favoring this knee in whatever style I'm running so much and I had already like been hurting my other hip and my other knee that my other side starts to just like, like throb out of the middle of nowhere. I hadn't had any problems. I'm like, oh my God. So I limped that along for maybe, maybe three quarters of a mile, you know, and I'm looking down the pipe of probably five miles at this point. I just got into the sand trap. I'm trying, I can barely walk downhill as these kind of, you know, you, you're going through this kind of sand trap and sort of um, you're, you're in a gulch, um, you know, so you're going up and down, but it's not, it's not huge. You're not ascending a ton of vertical depth or descending, you know, you're just, you're going up 30 feet and you're coming back down, but like going down, I could barely walk. And so I was having to straighten my legs and walk with my hips as I'm swaying to kind of prevent my knees from bending and then also putting pressure inadvertently on my knee. And so I start having to do this and, and I just get to the point to where I'm, I'm physically beaten physically and mentally. I'm like, I'm so destroyed because I had been doing so good up until that point, you know, and I, everything that I've been training for, I'm like, I'm, I'm right here. You're at the finish line. You're going to do it. And I just could not run. I could not physically run. And I, I just had to suck it up and just 
be mad at myself and get angry at myself just enough. And I had to like walk at the fastest pace I possibly could before the pain started becoming too much. So maybe we're walking at four or four and a half miles an hour. And that's, you know, that's not fast. You can, you can walk that comfortably. And it's, I felt so defeated, but I, I felt like a million things racing through my brain and long story short, I ended up the last, I I met mile 20 at four and a half hours, you know, maybe a little under that. And, you know, which is not great marathon time, you know, by any means. And I don't proclaim to be a marathon runner, but it was great for me. And I, my entire training was like, you're not racing anybody else there. You're racing your previous version of yourself. You know, you're trying to grow. You're trying to be better. You're trying to, you know, do something that at one point you did, but you knew you could have done better. And so I, I've got all this stuff going through my head and I just have to walk. I can't physically run anymore. And that was the longest five miles of my life. Not only because the pain was there, but I, I couldn't think of anything else other than you failed. You failed yourself. You failed your training. You failed everything. And it was just, uh, I crossed the finish line. And, and oddly enough, and this, this will show when I ran my first race how poorly I was in, in training and preparation, is that I beat my previous time, you know, by 10 minutes. Uh, I, I beat it. And, and there was a part of me that felt good, but the, the, it felt worse because I could have beaten it by an hour, maybe even more, you know? It's like sometimes you get that last, you get that wind, you know, that, that second wind at, you know, five miles out and you're just, oh, rah, you're just ready to do this. And I just, I felt so defeated, but I crossed the finish line and I tried to run. I tried to run the last hundred yards because as you're coming around this race, you know, it's lined wall to wall with people. And you've got the you've you've got the marathon run, uh, like the the triggers that 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 capture your time. And there's people there, they're handing out medals and like, you did it. And and it's a big feat. But I tried to run a hundred yards and I couldn't even get my body to move it. I was in so much pain. And I so I literally had to walk across the finish line. And it just uh, <laughs> It made me feel horrible, but at the same time, good in a weird way. Like I, I didn't stop. I finished this race, but all the preparation, all the preparation towards preparing for this race. And I was far more prepared and maybe I, maybe I ran too much. Maybe I trained too hard. Maybe I tweaked something during training that I didn't realize I tweaked. I I don't know. But the reality of it is, is like, I didn't do something good enough to make sure that I could cross that finish line in a running fashion. And that just, uh, it was a kick in the dick, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it just, you know, it just, it, it just kind of sucked. And, um, but we got through it. Um, if anybody is thinking about run the race, running that race, I would say, do it, do it once for yourself, but do not for even a moment, underestimate that race. It doesn't seem like it's anything. It's just, oh, it's okay. It's out in the desert. I've done this before. And, you know, I've gone on long hikes and, you know, I'll be fine. The weather, oh, the weather's good today. It's 60 miles an hour or, you know, 60 degrees and three miles an hour wind, like shouldn't be an issue. You know, it's, it, it's just, I, I can't explain this race, but there's a lot of folks walking off this course feeling pretty damn defeated. And, and if you read some of the reviews, some of these like heavy, heavy marathon runners, oh, 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 here we go. Boom. Let's, uh, okay. All right. Let's, okay. This makes sense. All right. So I've tried to explain this. I didn't realize that there was actually an image of the race route. All right. So you start the race here. Um, this is all kind of on white sands missile range, uh, on the base, right? You go in there, you're parking, um, you know, and race I think this year they had just over. At the morning announcements, I think they had just over 5,500 participants. The previous year in 2019, I think they had 7,000. I'd have to double check that. But anyways, so you start this, this, this entire section here, the bottom side, it's all paved. 
you know, this is uh, maybe a couple of miles. And then you get on this, you know, for anybody from like uh, Texas, it's, you know, Caliche, you know, or kind of like more of a, a gravel, like a road base, pretty hard pack, this entire lateral here, right? And then you make the loop. And then this is where you start to all of a sudden just slowly start to go uphill. So what's strange is like, I don't know how marathon runners do it, but I don't know how to train to run in same distance at a slight incline because your ankles are using different muscles than you're used to. And my, my ankles are, we're, we're one week past it, uh, as of Sunday, the race was last Sunday. And I just, I had such pain on the tops of my feet where, you know, at, at, at the, at the boat, you know, where, where you're, where my watch is sitting, right. Uh, for those of you I wear my left hand on my, my, my watch is on my left hand, but either way, you're, I had such pain in that crevice because my ankles were like inverted and, and I trained incline. I trained incline on a treadmill. I trained incline outside. I mean, I run, run hills every day, but like, this is different. It's just a gradual uphill, right? And so you get to this point, this is where you hop back up on, on pavement, pavement and you're running. This is five and a half miles, fully paved, two lane highway, all the way up to the top of the ridge. And it's probably maybe... I don't know, 1,000 feet, 1,500 feet max elevation gains, but it's just constant. It's just straight uphill. And as you're walking and you're talking to people, you're like, they're like, I read about this, man. I don't think this incline is going to be intense. It's like, it's kicking my ass. It's like, yeah, it is a straight son of a bitch. And then you get to this point. And this right here, this point is like most folks saving grace, right? Because you start to decline. But in 2019, I blew out my quads here pretty heavily because you're, you're, you're going downhill and you're already tired. You're already fatigued. Oh, it's horrible. And you just, you're, you're heel striking and you get to the bottom back down here and you're just burnt. Right. So I, I was preparing for this. I ran down this and you get all the way back on the turn and you meet here back in the middle. So this is right about mile 18 where you start to, you start, you're right. You're, you, you tie back into the main road. Now you're going the opposite direction. I felt something tweak here. And then here we go. Here's the son of a bitch. This is the big turn and this red part. Yeah, they made it red for a reason because it's the sand trap and it's horrible. This is about where I blew my knee out. And uh, yeah, you're going up and down, up and down. And then when you get here, it's the worst because it starts to actually get a little better. It's harder, harder packed pavement. You're out of the sand for the most part. You're still in sand, but it's, it's harder. So it's easier to run. And you can see a direct line to the finish line. You can see it in the distance, but I couldn't do a damn thing about it. I had to walk this entire, this was like, <laughs> it was, it, this was the longest defeating moment of my life. But at the end of the day, I made it. I finished. I beat my previous time, which was my goal, but it was by a joking, a matter of minutes when I was doing so good. Um, so we got through it. And that was kind of the start of my week for my spring break. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so we finished the race. There wasn't enough people this year, I think, to where they had, uh, didn't have enough people to run, uh, carts for volunteers. So you finish the race, you slam a, a dark Guinness beer or something just to replenish calories. Cause you're so depleted and there's no carts. I'm, I can barely walk at this point. I I'm straight legging to move. And I've got to walk a mile, a mile out to my truck out in this area because that's where the parking lots are. So hats off to you, Baton. You, uh, you kicked my ass this year. That's for damn sure. So I don't, I don't know if I'm ever going to run this specific race again. Um, I definitely want to do another marathon and, and I, I felt like I was very well trained for a marathon. Um, but, uh, this one, boy, it kicked my rear. That's for sure. So. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is, uh, maybe 45 miles outside of Las Cruces. So I, I went back to the truck in the truck. I'm driving. Um, yeah. And I'm just, I, you know, you're, you're starving, you're eating oranges and apples and whatever at every, but I'm, I'm just starving to death. So I get back into town. Nothing seems good. I can't walk. You know, I'm like, I don't want to get out of my vehicle until I get to the hotel and I'm going to limp up there and I'm going to lay down. <laughs> so I, uh, yeah, I'm, 
you know, as, as most of you guys know, I'm a huge, huge fan of, uh, of Theo Vaughn. I think he is a great podcaster. I think he is an amazing comedian. Um, I think he is top of his class in his trade and his brain is so different. And for any of you that also like Theo Vaughn and have watched his show, you know that he's a fan of uh, Raising Cane's. He's had the owner of that company on his show and, and it was a really great episode. So I've never been to, to Raising Cane. And um, so I'm in Las Cruces, I'm driving around, I'm kind of lost because truth be told, I'm looking for a liquor store because all I wanted to do was just have an ice cold beer, right? And just just kind of relax that night in a hot tub and just see if I could soak my knee back to health. So I'm driving around. Um, I can't find a liquor store, but I'm starving to death. And I see, you know, there's pizza, there's wings, there's da, 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 there's every fast food place in Las Cruces you can think of. And then I see Raisin Cane's and it looks pretty damn brand new. It's a good side of town. I'm like, oh man, I, you know, I've, I've heard Theo talk about it. I, I hear the ads on his podcast. I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to pull in. Like, let's, let's check out Raisin Cane's. And this is when my weekend and my spring break turned amazing. <laughs> so I pull into Raising Cane's and uh, I don't know if all Raising Cane's have a drive through window or not. I, I, yeah, again, I've never been to one. So I, I, I'm like, I, I don't know, like, is this normal? Do you go inside? But I, I saw it was like huge illuminated sign drive through. I'm like, sweet. All right. So I, I pull in there. It's kind of a weird parking lot. And you drive through, there's, there's like six or seven fast food restaurants. And so they share an entryway, right? So I get in there, I finally get in line and I, I see these, these two young, like clearly like college kids, you know, and, and they're out there, they've got like this, like uh, neck hanging, like satchel with like an iPad in it and like a card reader. And I'm like, oh, this is really fucking strange for a drive through. So I pull up and, um, you know, this kid is like. I just, I hope the story just details him to a T. Uh, first off, he's wearing an emo's not dead shirt, right? And so I know exactly where he's been in the recent months because having been a fan, I've got of that type of music. I've got friends that just went on an emo's not dead tour, a uh, big carnival cruise. And so I'm like, oh, sweet, man. Like, we'll be able to, I'm just going to chit chat with this guy. So I pull up and you know, he's like, welcome, welcome to Raising Cane's. How are you doing? I don't know what you're doing. You know, classic spiel. And I'm excited. You know, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm like, I've never been to a Cane's. Do what, you know, what, what do we, what do you recommend? You know, I heard about this on a stupid podcast I listened to from this comedian that I really enjoy. And he's like, um, well, we have a shortage on chicken. I'm like, okay. He's like, so, um, we're kind of limited on options. I was like, all right, cool. So what, what are your options? And he's like, well, uh, we, we really only have to offer, uh, here it is right here. <laughs> we, we, uh, we've only got the big box combo or we got the kids combo available. And I'm like, okay. I was like, so those are my options. And he's like, yeah, yeah, those are your options. I was like, well, um, I was like, eh, what's in the kids combo. And he's like, well, sir, I can't give you the kids combo because you don't have a child actually in your car. And I was like, okay, so what are my options? And he's like, well, the big box combo. I was like, well, I guess I'll take the big box combo. He's like, that's a good choice. And I was like, good choice? Yeah, I was like, it is a good choice. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> and so he dives into the big box combo. Here's all your selections, right? And so for those of you that don't know Canes, like I, I don't know and probably would choose to not know canes any longer. Uh, but either way there's chicken and, and they call them chicken fingers, right? I don't know why, because they're chicken tenders. Uh, they're massive, but I'm thinking chicken fingers, like the, the tiny little, uh, pieces of chicken that, that almost look like a French fry. Right. So when I see this menu, I'm going, Oh shit, I don't want that much chicken. I mean, I'm hungry, but I'm not starving. And, uh, so I'm like, okay, well that's chicken strips. He's like, no, so they're chicken fingers. I was like, Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue a drive through with, with a, with a guy that's wearing an emo's not dead shirt, um, about chicken fingers or chicken tenders. So anyways, he's like, well, um, I hate to let you know this, sir, but actually we at the store also have a shortage of coleslaw. So, 
um, instead of your side of coleslaw, we are offering a substitution for another side. I was like, okay, what are my substitutions? He's like, well, you could have another piece of toast, uh, which I don't recommend because it's a pretty large piece of toast, or you can get two sauces. I was like, all right, well, everybody, you know, raves about the, the, the sauces. So let's just go two sauces. We're going to just go ham bone. He's like, good choice. I was like, a choice. Yes, sir. I was like, it is a good choice. Thank you. <laughs> so then next we go to the drinks and this is where he just astounded me. And I was just blown away. I want to know this guy. I kind of want to go back to Cruces to be like, we should hang out, dude. And I think, um, I don't know. I just think we would have a really good time. And I think that I would laugh hysterically at you, but you may not also reciprocate the laughter back to me. And so he goes, what would you like to drink, sir? I was like, well, what are your, what are your options? At this point, I'm clearly being over the top smart aleck. And uh, he goes, well, thankfully, sir, we don't have any shortages. So you can choose anything, any of our, our products. And I was like, okay, cool. I don't want to drink. I'm good. He's like, you don't want to drink? I was like, I don't want to drink. He's like, you don't want to drink. And I was like, yep, I don't want to drink. He's like, okay. I was like, good choice, huh? He's like, I guess. So he takes my credit card. He's again, he's standing out there with this iPad and a credit card machine. And I, and I'm like, I'm like, Hey, uh, so what's up with your drive through man? Like, do you guys not have standard drive throughs where, where there's like a digital board and speak to somebody inside? And his response is, well, we're trying to get our numbers up. We're, tr we're trying to get more people through here so that we can justify to corporate that we can actually get to Raising Cane's in Las Cruces and have enough business for it. And now I will say this. Raising Cane's is next to like a Freddy's and a Dairy Queen and some other shit. And I'm looking around as I see this because I want to go to Raising Cane's. And it's the only restaurant with a line through the drive-thru, right? So he's not wrong in saying that they could probably justify another store in Las Cruces, another Raising Cane's. However, uh, I did inform him that that was not my question. And I said, well, yeah, I mean, I know you're out here, but what I'm saying is like, what happens when it rains? And the, the look or lack thereof look on this guy's face was like, like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. What do you want me to say? And I'm like, I'm just thinking in my head, like, well, I mean, do they expect you to stand out here in the rain or like, has this kid lived in the desert for so long that he's only ever seen like three rainstorms, you know, like what he, he wasn't thinking about that. And I'm like, well, this is not a regular drive through man. You, you do realize that, right? Like other, other restaurants don't have a person, actually two people outside with a digital display menu, but a person, a human being with nothing over their head to protect them from any, weather that may, may come about and standing there with an iPad, an emo's not dead shirt and a card reader. Like it didn't, it didn't like, it was, I don't know if it even went over his head. I just think it kind of like stopped and he just, he put up that shield, like a Zelda shield and was like, I'm not having it, sir. We're trying to build numbers here in Las Cruces because we need a second store and we need four people standing outside with iPads, card readers, and nothing over our head. And at that point, I paid the gentleman, got my card back, uh, got my food through the window. Place looked super clean. Food was super fast. Um, and then the real fun starts. So I didn't want to eat my truck. I wasn't feeling real good. I was like, man, if I drop a fucking chicken tender finger on my floorboard, it's really going to piss me off. So I got back to the hotel. My card reader was not working or the, uh, the card on my hotel was not working. So I limped all the way up to the second floor where my room was. I had a limp back down. I put my cane's chicken, uh, my backpack and the beers that I had actually bought at a store after canes on the floor, limped back down to the front office, told the guy, my card's not working. He's like, are you sure? I was like, well, yeah. I mean, unless I was at the wrong room. He's like, you might've been around at the wrong room. I was like, I was at my room, dude, please check my card. Grabs it. Boop, 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 boop. Here you go, Mr. Wolf. Should be good. Okay. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. Limp back up there. Go to scan the card. Red light. 
red light. I'm like, all right, maybe, maybe there's a delay in their system. Maybe I limped my bitch ass up here so fast that I beat the delay. And so I hit it the third beep, red light. So I limped back down and I was like, okay, man, um, I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm in a lot of pain right now and I'm super, super angry. Uh, I need you to re- just replace this card so I can get into my room. So that apparently is not something you do at a Hilton. They cherish those cards, even though you can walk out of that hotel with them free of will. And uh, he didn't want to argue, but I could see in his face that at some level, he knew he was breaking an unspoken rule by giving me a brand new card. So reluctantly, this gentleman gives me a brand new card, and I limp my bitch ass back up to the hotel room. Boop. Green light. Go into the hotel, sit down as fast as I can, and I'm like, all right, man, let's, oh, dude, let's try this Canes. I'm so excited, right? So I grab these chicken tenders or fingers, I take a bite, and I'm like, what the hell, man? Now, don't, get, don't get me wrong. I'm going to preface this real quick. The chicken tenders were really good. The chicken was great. The breading or the batter was great, right? It was crispy. It was, but there's no flavor, none, none whatsoever. There's no salt. There's no spice. There's no hint of this restaurant was founded in Texas. Not a, not a shred. It's the most bland chicken tenor I've ever had in my life. So I'm like, all right, okay, let's, uh, Let's just try this sauce, right? Because everything I've heard about canes is sauce. So before that, I'm like, all right, I'll take a piece of bread. It's it's a weird white bread with sesame seeds on top. I don't even know what kind of bread it was, but it just wasn't my flavor, man. It was just too thick, too much bread, probably coming off a race. I didn't, I didn't want to eat bread. It just it didn't sound good, didn't taste good. So I go straight back to the chicken tenders and the dipping sauce. So I dip the chicken, chicken tender in there, take a bite. Bam, bam, bam. Everything everybody has ever said about canes, raising canes, I don't know if it's their special sauce. It was just the sauce that was ordered. So regular ass sauce, dude, it is otherworldly. It's got like mustard and I tasted honey. Pretty sure there was sweet poppy seeds or something in there. I don't know. It it was absolutely amazing. So I finished my meal. We're all good. I'm sitting there and I'm like, kind of let down. Like, I, I don't mean, to, I'm not trying to put shade on Raising Canes because I think their food was quality. It was fast. You know, it was good, really good cooked chicken tenders. I mean, and you know, like you can, you can get some shit chicken tenders. Like we've, we've all been to that place like, ugh, and you don't even eat one. These were not that. They were definitely edible. They were, they were fried very well. The sauce was amazing. But the overall experience, I was like so glad that I actually didn't get the option of having the coleslaw because I felt like the coleslaw, because everything else was bland, would have tasted like straight up butthole, you know? Like, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to envision what their coleslaw would have tasted like. And probably just like every other wannabe coleslaw in Texas, it tastes like Texas coleslaw, right? He needs to shift over a state and maybe just take a little bit of a spice and some flavor from Louisiana and be like, oh, this is really good coleslaw. I didn't have it, so I shouldn't speak that way to it, but that's just what I'm thinking, right? Because everything was bland except for the sauce. So it's like, I felt let down. And this is nothing against anybody who loves Raising Cane's chicken or anybody who promotes or advertises for Raising Cane's. But I just think they should be upfront and honest and be like, maybe their slogan should be changed to we're a chicken store, but damn, our sauce... You know, so my overall experience with Raising Cane's was not a negative one, but it was, it was a letdown. I'll tell you that. And maybe, maybe 
maybe it was because we have a shortage of everything, it seems like, in this fucking country. And maybe because they only had one option. Maybe it was because the emo's not dead, dude, and the outside drive-up thing trying to produce another store. Maybe they didn't have the spices that they normally have. I, I don't know, right? All those things added up to my experience. But what I will say is that I am never going back to a Raisin Cane's for some dipping sauce. That is some straight baby back bullshit. And unless I'm wrong, please tell me that I'm wrong. Shoot me an email and be like, it was that store. It was Las Cruces. It was all the other things. It was the emo's not dead kid. I don't know. Like, because if they're really good normally, I would maybe take some advice and go back to another store and be like, okay, let's try this for round two. But I'm not taking my kids there, you know? It's like, it's not, it's not inexpensive fast food. It's not, it's not cheap and it didn't taste cheap, but it's like, it just was very blase, just blah, like, all right, cool. I just stuffed chicken in my body. Thankfully, there was a hint of something good in the form of a sauce. But outside of that, fuck off, Raisin Cane's. <laughs> oh. So anyways, yeah, I made it back, came back to town. Um, everything was good. My knee surprisingly started feeling much better the next day. So I do think uh, that it was just maybe water retention. I, I don't know. anybody. If, if anybody is a marathon runner or like a, a heavy duty runner that has ever experienced that, like I thought legit I might have like torn a ligament. It was so bad during the race. But the next day, granted, I sat in the hot tub for 45 minutes after I ate shitty ass Raisin Cane's, but and maybe that helped. But as of now, like very little like pain. I haven't run yet, but I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. Right. I mean, there's nothing torn in there. I can tell that cause I've got, I've got strength in my knee. So if anybody knows, like, like just shoot me a message, let me know what that is. Like what caused that situation? Cause I'm, I'm super curious. Cause it was, I didn't expect it. It came out of left field, but either way you get up the next morning, head back home, get home, uh, go to work. Cause I got a lot of real estate going on this time of year. I'm back in town for a couple of days and uh, my wife's got a client that wants something and she's an interior designer and we can't find that locally. We, we went to Farmington, we went to uh, Pagosa, we went to Durango, we did it and it's all this stuff, right? It's like, man, we just, all right, we're going to, we're going to figure this out. How do we do this? Right. And so she's got a big meeting coming up. She's like, well, you know, we, we were, unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to, she's like, I'm going to have to go to Scottsdale or Phoenix to go to these monster slab yards to pick out something that these folks want. And I'm like, well, I don't want you to go to Phoenix by yourself. So we loaded up the kids and the dog. And, uh, on Thursday we drove our asses down to Scottsdale and, uh, yeah, we had a little bit of a vacation. It was amazing. We got a VRBO, um, with a pool and probably couldn't afford it, but we did it anyways. The kids had a great time. Uh, she got what she needed done and yeah, we, we came back, but that, <laughs> that VRBO experience, whoo, that was, a uh, you talk about panic. So we on Thursday, let's see, we left Thursday, right? So Wednesday night we get onto VRBO or Airbnb and we, and we book a place and it's nice. It's totally you know, fine. It's cute. It's got games and it's, it's perfect for us just to go stay a, a night and a, a night and another day. And so when you book on VRBO, normally there is like a pending period and it's, sometimes it's minutes, sometimes it's, you know, 24 hours, but I've never had one not get accepted. And so the next morning we wake up and we're, we're packed up, we're hitting the road and I'm like, Hey, what's going on with the VRBO? And my wife is like, well, it's, it's still pending. I'm like, well, we got to go like you, you've got a meeting. We, we have to go to these slab yards on a weekday. So we, we've got to get there. You have to be there tomorrow. So we take the risk. We start driving midway through the drive. It's a, you know, it's about an eight hour drive. So midway through the drive, bing, the pending goes away. Approved. Okay. All right. So we're like, sweet. Okay. This is good. But it was, it was strange. It was like, usually you, you get booked, you come off pending and you get a confirmation email and then you get a, here's how you enter the house and here's the, the rules and regulations and here's the stay book. And this tells you what you do when you leave. And we didn't get any of that. So we're like 
we get to Flagstaff and I'm like, well, let's, let's email and see what's going on. You know, like we, we don't even know the address of this house. And so we email, they finally give us the address and then we're like, okay, well, how do we get into the house? Like, is there a code? Is there a key? Like what, what is going on? No response, no response. Right. So we're an hour outside of where this, we think this house is going to be. And they respond and there's like, oh man, well, there's a, we had an issue with the hot water heater and there's a plumber there. He's going to be done. Are you guys okay with, with checking in at like six? We're like, yeah, it's perfect. We're going to go to the grocery store first and bada bing, bada boom. And so we do that. And then, so we text, we're like, okay, it's six 30. Now we were trying to give some time. Is the plumber done? What's the access code to the house? So no response. So we drive to the house because they had given us the address in one of the previous emails. And so we get there and we see a plumbing truck out back and we hear bing, 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 like something's happening. We're like, what is going on? So we're emailing, no response, no response. Finally, we get an email that says, the plumber just called. It's going to be longer than we expected. Um, are you guys there? And we're like, yeah, we're, we're out front. And so that was it. So we respond like, what, what are we doing? Like, what's going on? So we wait at this point, it's probably, oh, 7.30, 7.45. We're supposed to check in at 6, and we're like, what is going on? And so finally, we get a last email that says, we're so sorry. The problem is not going to be corrected today. We have to refund your money, and we're sorry that we can't offer you a place to stay. And I'm like, what in the fuck are you talking about? This is spring break weekend in Phoenix, Scottsdale area. There's nothing available. Hotel rooms are $350 a night to $400 because we brought our dog, right? We were going to stay at this house. Those hotel rooms, we were, we were thinking, okay, all right, we have to find a place to stay. We're, we're going to be in a jam. So we're gonna have to get a hotel room. We had just bought a hundred dollars worth of groceries for the weekend None of the hotel rooms have a kitchenette. So we're we're going to waste a hundred dollars worth of groceries. Plus we're going to pay 400 some odd dollars a night to get a hotel room that allows a dog. They have no nothing available other than a queen bed and a blow up mattress or like a pull out mattress or something like that. And I'm like, oh man, the, the, you know, we've been telling the kids like, oh, we're going to be at a place where we have a pool. It's going to be fun for a couple of days. So we, we get on. VRBO. There's literally, there is nothing available for the timeframes we need. Nothing. You zoom out. At that moment, we're looking, you know, for uh, Thursday night, Friday night, leave Saturday. Nothing in all of Phoenix. Nothing that allows dogs. Nothing that can accommodate us. And so we get on Airbnb and my wife randomly texts one of the ones that we had been looking at and they respond back and they're like, yep, we actually had a cancellation tonight. So we, we can book you guys. Like, all right, fine. This sounds great. So she starts the reservation pol- process. But Airbnb has a different payment policy. And you have to partner with Plaid. So it's basically like it not only, not income verification, but it's like ID verification before you can actually make a payment. So something is happening. She, you know, with her registration, she can't register with Plaid. We're an hour. We're texting this guy because he sent us a, a certificate. Like, here's the login. We don't want to open it back up because then somebody could come in and book it. So he's finally like communicating with us and we're like, is it on VRBO? And he's like, yeah, because we we can't get Airbnb to work. Like we don't know how. So, yeah, it's on VRBO. You should be able to find it. So because they had already had it blocked out, it doesn't show up on VRBO. So I finally find the house through like a Google search and I'm like, what's going on? So I'm emailing the guy. I'm like, look, this is, this is the situation. Can we go ahead and book it through VRBO, but about all this stuff. And he just goes silent. Like he had been communicating, 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 and then nothing. And we're like, what in the hell? What is going on? What are we going to do with the kids? You know, I've got to piss like a racehorse. I've been sitting at this place for two hours And I'm like, oh my Lord. So I'm like, let me log into my Airbnb account because I think I had rented something on a work trip like a couple of years ago. And I find the place. I have to text him and say, you know, I'm trying to register this through Airbnb on my account. Can you open it up? And I went ahead and just forced the order, even though it was like, it's not available. I forced the order. And it goes to pending. It's like, we got to do a background check. 
I'm like, oh my God. So I have my passport with me. I scanned it, took a picture of myself. Thankfully, my Plaid account had already been pre-approved from another deal. This was just another layer of security. And so we're like, oh my God, what are we going to do? I'm like, I don't know. I have to get out of here. So I've got to go to the bathroom so bad. Like we, we have to, so we found a target and we're pulling into target. I park and all of a sudden, bing. I'm like, I looked down on my phone. Your order has been approved. Congratulations. Here's your stay. Ah, and it was like the biggest sigh of relief because like at that point we were, we were panicked. We were so freaked out. Like, what are we going to do? Like, it's one thing if you got like, you, you know, yourself by, you know, just you and your wife, then it's another layer. If you have your kids, like you got to figure this out. It's a whole nother layer. If you have a dog, right? We had just driven eight hours. You know, we left at 10 at this moment. It's, it's eight 30 at night. And we're like, Oh my Lord, what's going on? So we get this place. They approve us going to target finally get over this place. It's way far north from where we're at. Like between the two VRBOs, so we'll drive 25 minutes. The kids are, when are we going to get there? When are we going to get there? And uh, we finally get there. We open it up. We see the pool in the back and it's just like bags down, swimming trunks on. My kids are in the pool. Splash, we're in the hot tub. And it's just like, whoo, it all worked itself out in some kind of crazy, weird, miraculous way. And so we wake up. Friday morning, after that wild night of just trying to figure stuff out, we have coffee by the pool, the sun's shining, it's 60 degrees, it's fucking spring break, baby. And we go do my stuff, do the stuff that my wife has to do for her client, we get everything finished, we come back, we're chilling, we're just lounging around the pool, and then I get a message from one of my really good friends that still lives there from college, they come over, they have dinner. We have such an enjoyable time. I haven't seen them for almost a decade. And it was like the fastest 72 hours of my life. But that one day of just being there with blue skies, with 60 degree weather, sitting around a pool, watching my kids swim, watching them laugh, laughing with my wife, having a glass of wine, having a white claw, mixing a white claw with a really expensive glass of wine that I didn't know was expensive it was just awesome. It was, it was just, it made spring break, even though we had no plans of doing anything, it made spring break this year so damn enjoyable. And it was just, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good week. It was crazy. It was wild. I put 3000 miles on my truck this week, 3000 miles. And, uh, that was crazy. It was a little bit depressing, but, um, it was, it was very well worth it. It was so, I look back at it today, going back to work, kids go back to school, go to work. And I just like had a moment of just like, that was crazy wild, but it was so needed to just have 48 hours of just relaxing with the people that I love most in this entire world. And the fact that we had a pool at our disposal well, it's what it is, baby. I hope everybody had a an enjoyable spring break as well. I hope that um, you got some time to to maybe check out for a second and uh, just realize that time is fleeting. And if we don't spend it with the people that we love the most, you won't get that opportunity back. So. Look, man, I want to say thank you guys so very much. Um, I know we started out the episode with it, but I, uh, looking at some numbers today, you know, I'm just, every time I look at analytics it, with, with this show, it just blows me away. It's, it's such a positive deal because this little thing that we're doing can have an impact on people. And seeing, seeing you guys watch, this show and grow it on its own. It's just, it it gives me such joy to just, to just kind of be a part of this, even though I'm, I'm interviewing folks and I'm talking to you guys on a podcast or on YouTube. Um, I, I feel like I'm more a part of this than, than I am directing it. And it, uh, it was really cool to see that today. And I just want to, it's from the bottom of my heart, 
uh, thank you guys so very much for continuing listening to this podcast and to liking it and sharing it and just being involved with it. Um, it's a really cool thing. And I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm just happy to be a part of it. So you guys be good to each other. Get out there and give somebody a damn hug. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn.